Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual topics. You can ask your questions, get your doubts cleared. And those who are doing the program, this is the support system. Satsang is the way to interact and learn. So all questions are invited. Graham is asking, can you talk about Diwali? As a Westerner, all I know is, it is the festival of lights and is associated with Lakshmi. Yes, but it is also new year, start of a new year. And the rest is simply like any other worship, celebration, parties, shopping. And from the point of view of the path of knowledge, the light here means the light of awareness. So all of these things have no significance except the light. And then anybody will say, why should we light the light of awareness only once per year? What about the 364 days? So somebody on the path of knowledge celebrates Diwali every day by lighting the lamp of awareness within. There is no need to show off. There is no need to spend money like crazy or to pollute the atmosphere or to do the blind worship of some strange gods and goddesses. Celebrate it every day and you will get the joy of it every day. Why wait for one day in one year to get the joy of it when you can have it every day? So anybody on the path of knowledge totally discards the celebrations done by ordinary people. They are not only useless, they are very limited. And the ordinary people themselves, they don't know what they are doing actually. For them it is nothing more than eating and shopping. So the festivals of significance happen every day for a seeker. You can celebrate any day, not on a day prescribed by some random society, some random culture. You are free. You don't need to give it a name which everybody has given. and You don't need to do the ritual which these mindless people are doing mindlessly. You make it your own. You celebrate it whenever you want, however you want. And I do it every day actually, every day's festival. Somebody who is still following the society is a slave of the society. The knowledge has made no difference at all. Some people will say, no, I need to celebrate because my family celebrates. And then that is your bondage. It cannot be called an excuse. It has to be a bondage. Some people will say, I like it when everybody celebrates. I enjoy it. That is another bondage. Dependency. You are deriving your happiness from the celebrations of others. And there can be many more excuses. All you need to remember is that you are totally free. Not bound by the rituals, festivals and whatever of these people who mean nothing to you. Especially when these days all these festivals are totally distorted. Those who celebrate it, they don't really know what they are doing. And if you join in thinking that it's a good thing, you are actually doing a disservice. As you know, the Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth. Now we understand why this is the biggest festival. This is the festival of materialistic people who blindly believe there is a superstition there that worshipping something is going to make them, make them rich. Is it spiritual? Is it even human? Totally animalistic. Festival of lights. You see, there is enough light in the daytime. And people spend a lot of electricity burning lots of lights, which is completely useless. And not only that, they burn the oil, they burn the butter and whatever expensive things, which is stupidity. So this festival has become a disaster. Nothing to enjoy, nothing to celebrate here. So Graham made a big mistake, you asked me. Do not ask me these questions. <laughs> they will be destroyed completely. So if you want to know more about the mainstream version, just Google it. Prashant is saying, please explain difference between experiencer in Gyanmar and I am as in the teaching of Nisaddat Maharaj. And who am I as per Raman Maharshi? As far as I know, Nisaddat Maharaj has a completely different terminology. And thanks to the translators, it is complete nonsense. So it will be very difficult to find out the exact definition of I am. As far as I know from the quotations and little bit bits and pieces that were recorded in the books that by I am he means ego. He calls the experiencer as the ultimate. So he will say there is no I amness in the ultimate. Something like this. But very difficult for a newcomer at least to find out what he's saying. And uh, as per Raman Maharshi, it's more clear. Who am I? 
points to the essence of what I am, I am, not to the person that I am. And again, these words are complete disaster. He could have easily said, find out your essence by checking what you are not. But he went with the three letter, three word sentence, who am I? And now it causes a lot of confusion. So something which becomes popular does not mean that it has uh, some quality in it. It is just popular. But it is important. Why? Because we know of the path of knowledge through these people, these famous people. They are your first point of contact with the path of knowledge. And you get there whatever you can get. You absorb whatever you can absorb and then you will be left with more questions and confusions. But at least you started. So it takes a little bit of knowledge to understand what these masters are saying. If you just pick up the book and start reading it, probably 90% of the time nothing will be understood. But some people can easily grasp what they are saying because they have previous practice or they are highly intelligent. We don't know the cause. What is my suggestion is that uh, do not look at what other teachers are saying. Try to learn what your teacher is saying. And that is most important. And then let whatever others are talking about, about, let them talk about it. Unless you need to teach in that tradition, which you will never do. Why will you go and teach in that tradition? And with the traditions and with the teachers, the terminology changes. And then it is an endless pursuit to find the real meaning of the words. And what do you get in the end? Nothing actually. Why? Because the Guru and the words, they are not the means of knowledge. Your experience and your intellect gives you knowledge. So this whole exercise is actually fruitless. Did you get it through your own experience and through your own intellect? Done. Nothing more is needed. Be in peace. Be in bliss. There is no need to torture your intellect. Because there are hundreds of these teachers. How many are you going to study and for what? The words, it's very funny that they change every 100 or 200 years. They keep changing. Will the knowledge change? No, because knowledge is not based on the words, not based on the meanings of the words. It has to be your direct experience. And nobody can show you your direct experience, not even you, except your guru. And then whatever words he chooses will be dropped also. You will become wordless. You will become silent. The silence is the language of path of knowledge, not the words. Once you get the knowledge and if you listen carefully for a few months, read few books, you will understand what they are saying. And it will be exactly that which you already know. Only very, very encrypted, headache causing books. Compared to that, this movement gives you the whole knowledge. Sometimes it is very educating to read what, what others are saying because sometimes you get better metaphors, some beautiful examples, stories and probably somebody has explained this one concept better than you can ex- explain. These are the advantages. And where are they useful when you are teaching? When you want to perfect your skill of teaching, how to convey the idea, how to transmit the knowledge, then you should explore how it is taught in different traditions. It can take a long time, 10 years, 20 years, like the academics do. But uh, I'll tell you the shortcut. This program is the best. You will never find this path of knowledge explained more clearly anywhere else. It is a struggle. Everywhere is, is a struggle. This is the clearest so far in the history. Because it came directly from the source, it was not taken from the scriptures. That is why you will find new names or the words are redefined because they were so popular. There were very clear teachings in the past. But the context is now lost. The culture is gone, the language is gone and the people who could interpret those teachings are gone. So right now, presently, this one is the clearest. You will get the whole knowledge simply by listening because it points to your experience not to your dictionary. Don't need to open the dictionary. Don't need to analyze the books of Nisardatta or anybody. The knowledge is in front of your eyes. But since it is given so easily and so conveniently, its value is not understood. So people keep thinking that probably Raman Maharshi has more, this Upanishad has more, and they waste their time. This program has more, yes. 
which 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 will never be found in any book so it looks like marketing but this is my experience this was uh, possible because there was no one guru there was no single guru otherwise i would be repeating that guru like a parrot same words same examples and same uh, errors but since it was taken from many we took the best from the experts so that's why after doing this program you won't need to read any book and you will have so much that you can write many books krishna is saying the 3d program alone was so direct and clear yes you see the knowledge is very simple the truth is very simple and the mind is very complex so always makes it very very complex so the 3d program is the simplest so far and it can be simplified even more some people who are conducting the program they have told me that it is possible to do the 3 day program in 45 minutes 15 15 15 15 does not take 3 days depending of course on the intelligence of the receiver the person who is receiving so the ac- the actual knowledge is very very simple actually that is why we say it is only for those who are ready the simplicity is going to obscure the knowledge for others they are not ready if you get enough powers like spiritual powers then this can be reduced to 3 second program because then you can manipulate the mind show the illusion show that you are not the body make the body disappear you know make the world disappear do few more miracles to show that you are the existence then 3 seconds but we don't have the powers we have only words so it takes 3 days 3 hours actually but that is the complete the bigger program is simply details training of some kind training for the mind no new knowledge is given but the skill is given sushant is saying please throw some light on what is necessary very easy that which cannot be avoided is necessary if you can avoid it right now not necessary now you can do this homework you can find out things which are which you are doing every day that are necessary things which are not necessary they can be done later or can be skipped completely for example sleeping and eating very necessary isn't it but your entertainment gossip and youtube videos <laughs> unnecessary so usually it is seen that uh, that which is related to survival is most necessary but our knowledge and all these gurus and whatever you need to decide it the lower layers have already decided what is necessary for them because here you will need to break down this person into layers so the lower layers already know what is necessary and they are doing it and the problem is in the higher they don't know there is more freedom there that's why this question arises an animal is not going to ask what is necessary that complete programming is already there because we have a little bit of freedom we can do that necessary so that is actually not a negative thing which means the arts the music the science the spirituality this was made possible because the program does not say that you need to do exactly this and this now you need to decide what is avoidable that will depend on your life goal if there is no life goal how will you decide what is necessary excluding the lower stuff the base once they are taken care of you need to decide your life goal for majority the life goal is eating defending and reproducing that is necessary but most probably many people have gone past that stage now there is blank vacancy in their lives what to do <laughs> so they keep doing the same thing the triple action triple x so this guidance the light is shown by the guru because you are lost you don't know what is necessary you need to approach the guru then with some brain washing you will be told what is necessary because normally an average seeker does not really know what do they want so the guru hears actually patiently what do you want <laughs> whatever nonsense is told usually the guru says yes it will be done that is what i say always it will be done and slowly the seeker progresses comes to know what is necessary and ultimately you will see that after knowledge nothing is necessary getting the knowledge was most necessary the knowledge means your essential knowledge and after that it is a play everything can be discarded so the path of knowledge starts with a goal is it is necessary then we become aimless that is the goal the aim is to become aimless on the path of knowledge because the existence has no goals no aims it is already everything 
so here you can relax your intellect simply enjoy that is called the bliss being in present simply letting the life flow now what is necessary <laughs> nothing at all but you won't appreciate this thing so you are given a goal or you are because you are so adamant your goal is accepted okay we'll start with your goal slowly it is the skill of the guru to bring the seeker on the track of aimlessness then some people do ask me because you see they want to follow me what is your goal and then i need to cook up a story so people ask me how can i tell them that <laughs> you need to become aimless their whole practice is going to be ruined so something some lies are told white lies that my goal is to serve everybody that my goal is to ensure progress for other seekers to keep the knowledge alive and so on but uh, that is all wrong you see not not true it is not the goal it is the play what this creature has found is this is the most entertaining play this is the <laughs> best drama in the universe everything else is a little bit boring isn't it it is just like putting your little boat in the river and pretending that you are rowing the boat in the direction of the river and then you are enjoying your success because yes the boat is going very fast in that direction it is like this so the whole guru field is actually a play a drama which also i say many times that people don't understand big drama company but let me tell you there is nothing better than this yes this is the biggest joke that somebody is trying to enlighten somebody or how is it even possible so if you do this work the service thinking that i am doing it and it is a great work then you already failed nothing will get done yes you can get involved in it but from time to time <laughs> something happens which wakes you up pratik is saying the only work left which is not possible which work you're talking about yes yes bodhisattva it is yes it is not a work you can guess it actually you can guess it from the diamond sutra itself if you read the full text there i'll liberate everybody t- till the end of time and in doing so nobody nobody is liberated <laughs> that's what is written there and people do not mention the last sentence because they don't understand what what, what was said there it is impossible yes pratip is right whatever we are doing here is a joke hmm? but uh, unfortunately there is nothing better even guruji somebody somebody was asking me that after completing the path of knowledge what is your final say I said, just laugh. There is nothing. <laughs> yes, there is nothing to do. You see, your aims are also taken away. This is you are made so empty that there remains nothing to do. Actually, you will only know this thing that already nothing was happening. Already there was nobody to do anything. So you see, it's like permanent emptiness now. So a lot of spirituality is just lies, just decoration on the nothingness. that is in the heart of spirituality because nobody wants to go there <laughs> they are taken in circles and rounds and rounds and rounds even what is bodhisattva they don't want to go there they have justification yes who will do it if you don't do it somebody else will do it who will be me only Every, everybody is me only so the, even the logic fails here so we can call it the metta spirituality so after you master the awareness what do you do you do the metta spirituality where the awareness itself is a joke so you see today we invented a new word now in future <laughs> people will discuss endlessly what did it mean by metta spiritual like nowadays we discuss what is emptiness what is vibration and so on you see those who made those words <laughs> they were joking so now you will understand that most of the great teachers they did not teach simply their ways were very colorful they had to kill monsters they had to cause wars they had to save beautiful women so on because you see this knowledge cannot be given directly nobody will take it so the lies are added spiced up spirituality and that is called the leela and every guru is doing that actually more or less colorful so you will see the more controversial the guru is the more leela he is he is doing the more enjoyment he is taking out of this bodhisattva work so everybody on the path of knowledge needs to start playing a little bit see what happens just like a game but uh, there is another option that you do nothing which is also just as good 
because here the the intellect fails the logic fails actually what is good what is better cannot be defined now once you understand that the existence speaks the language of silence you can play and there the words are allowed parthiv is saying so much is happening that it cannot be conveyed to others so much happens in maya yes and all that uh, adds into all that sums up into big zero why so much is happening because actually nothing is happening so infinite uh, events can appear here but yes you will need to surrender the intellect it is beyond intellect cannot be understood you will encounter the limits of the intellect here because the new newcomer can ask you see like they ask why is this happening why is that happening why was this created <laughs> why was that created why was i created and so on you see in the same way they can ask why there is a play go on asking nothing will be learned so yes surrender at the end the play is the beginning yes so much non zeros were invented <laughs> yes sometimes some teachers they tell long story to explain a simple concept like the story of the lion that is raised by the sheep and after listening to the story i used to get irritated why because why do we need this big story to explain something which is so simple then i came to know that it is simply for the people who will not accept the final conclusion directly so the gurus go on inventing things to cater for the different kind of seekers i was of, of a different kind you know tell me the final point the bottom line read the upanishad no no tell me <laughs> what is written there okay this is written how is this true this is how it is true thank you very much nothing more was needed so now i am doing the same actually i am inventing the tomato and so on <laughs> the program the 3d and so many personal projects are going on where i need to lie every day to the seekers because they are not there where you see we are simply ask what is the truth and how it is true and there is one more level above this level of seekers i think i discussed this some time ago that they need to be told the valid means of knowledge that's all they need to hear these are the means of knowledge one two the whole spirituality ends there now it is your homework find out why do we need a six month program and then a 12 year program <laughs> then purification then 20 lifetimes of human births to cut your karmic stuff and so on do we need all that so yes this zero is very small and the non zeros are infinite anybody who is perfectly ready will be given the means of knowledge and will be left alone no need to describe anything because from the means of knowledge it is from there onwards it is so natural and so simple smooth right so probably that gives me an idea that i'll simply make another program where only this much will be told <laughs> these are the means of knowledge and uh, this is the reason for choosing the means these means the job of the guru is so simple now but what has happened is because of the conditioning and uh, very very low quality education system that we have in the society the job of the guru is very difficult now you must have seen these brilliant students who are given a simple theorem or something you see one rule is given in mathematics and something next day they can solve the whole book the spirituality is like this pathless is asking after spiritual awakening what is left to discover there are two things like i said you can play or there is infinite amount of illusion which if you want you can discover you can explore that totally depends on uh, the choice of the seeker and that exploration must be done in complete knowledge which means knowing fully that it is worthless useless waste of time so it is also play different kind of play so like i said some people will choose the bodhisattva tendency which means they will play in such a way that they can create more players so what is there to discover how to do this how to spread the light of knowledge effectively quickly and in the most entertaining way so it looks like we have three choices now but they are all play which means you don't really have a choice pathless saying i want to explore spiritual places of india very good go ahead very nice gram is asking isn't grace required there isn't anything new in the yoga content yes grace is required yes absolutely so no doubt about it there are no two opinions about it 
so that's why i told you that uh, the guru is actually pretending <laughs> that he is doing something he is rowing the boat in the direction of the river so ultimately it is done by the grace not by the guru the guru takes advantage of this grace who is ready and he appears before that the student is ready the guru appears before the student he is anyway going to go there but the guru makes it convenient faster that's all and uh, guruji mm. one more important thing i have noticed that uh, if uh, if the seeker is completely ready then even the master sees everything regarding that students even the causal body is even what is going to happen if if the student is perfectly ready then mm. master can see everything and if the student is not ready uh, then only uh, the the limitation is extended for for perception to that extent Yes, possible. Yes, your experience is very good. Yes, it is possible that, and the sign of the grace is that the master recognizes the student, like he said, and the student recognizes the master. How will I know I am under the grace, or the time has come? This will happen. The falling in love happens automatically, and like he said, you <laughs> yes, everything is clear after that. The guru knows what to do. so even uh, though i do cannot explain these things this will be your direct experience this is how it happens so sometimes we say it is predestined but it it, it is not so simple it is possible that the, even if the guru is a small guru you see tiny any guru new comer guru he will be given all the information about the student which is in front of him by the guru field because ultimately they are the guru we, we are not you see <laughs> <laughs> we are clerks so the grace decides what what will happen if the student is not ready the guru can do whatever he wants to do but nothing moves actually nothing moves sometimes this exercise is taken up as a self training that let me see if i can motivate the student to progress forward even i do that i am working on people who are refusing to move since many years so the guru has infinite patience but it is a learning experience you know what will trigger the grace <laughs> like they say nothing happens by effort it happens by grace but in order to become eligible for the grace you need to do the effort so even the guru is doing the effort you see these are well known facts in the field of spirituality and it is contradictory it is paradoxical but this is how it is you know we we don't claim to know it we don't claim to understand it using the intellect so that is why you know it is all thrown in the category of play because what else the intellect can say about these things prathib is saying even death of some of my seekers we cannot tell them because it brings karma as if i tell guru is supplied anything he wants yes yes you will be given a lot of information and yes we should not reveal it unless it is necessary sometimes the information is latent like intellectually we don't know what is there but uh, when the time comes to give a direction to provide the direction to the student exactly the right words will come out of your mouth so it is something which is deeper than the intellect the information that is given Parthiv is asking. I don't know for how many years you have been witnessing these miracles. Can you tell? Yes, actually, I am saying it since a long time, but it started happening more frequently when I actively started teaching. You know, we sit down and discuss the spiritual matters and all with the friends and so on. And I used to know a few things, especially who will fail. <laughs> I don't know. This is the probably the design of this equipment here. that it knows who will fail more precisely than what to do about you know how to direct the person so that uh, i used to get many times but as soon as i actively took on the responsibility of teaching then i was given immediate help now also it comes whenever it is required because if i demand something if i demand an information probably nothing is given when it is needed it is given sometimes you see it can happen that i come to know many things instantly but then this intellect is not sure you see because the nature of the intellect is skeptical where is the proof <laughs> did i imagine all these things and so on you see so we simply do our best so how many years i can't even remember i think 
three or four years uh, and I want to make it clear that it's never 100% accurate also. Sometimes it is simply product of our imagination. Most of the gurus I've seen will say that they are given, they don't do it, they don't even know how to do it, like performing the miracles and so on. They become the instrument of that action. And that is why, you know, most of the gurus, they fail to pass the skeptic test. Okay, you heal somebody, now heal this fellow in front of me, with all the doctors present and the meters around. And, you know, almost 100% time that miracle man fails, cannot do anything. So many of the gurus I have seen, they will say that it happens, I don't do it. What happens is exactly that which is needed, which this small intellect is incapable of deciding. So I have seen these things, yes, I have witnessed many events like this. Is the death and all also, you know, sometimes it comes. Like I remember somebody sent me a message that their relative is very sick in the ICU and because you know we are gurus <laughs> everybody thinks that they know the miracles so the fellow asked me he requested that I should pray for that person and I said yes I am going to pray for your relative and then we I kept the phone and then I prayed let that which is best happen for this fellow who is sick to the guru field and there I got the answer itself that he is going to die <laughs> That is the best that is going to happen. Do, you don't need to pray. Don't waste my time. That was the answer. And did I tell him? No, I, I did not tell him. Next day, that fellow was dead. Vikas is asking, how did you decide or at which point did you know that you must teach? I think you mentioned in your last satsang that their final destiny of every seeker is Bodhisattva. How would a seeker know that he, she is ready to teach? You see, we, this kind of person, you know, seeker they, they don't do not they do not decide to become a guru it is not a planned uh, action so i did not come to know or i did not decide what happened is you know i decided to express to share fully knowing that nobody wants this very few people want the, this thing and now they have hundreds of gurus who are saying the same thing so anyhow the expression was decided i came to know when to express when I was 100% certain that this is the truth, there cannot be anything else. You know, this certainty is uh, like sun shining in the sky. It is so clear that when all the doubt is removed. And many people in our satsang are in this position now. They don't have any doubts. So there the expression becomes very beautiful, very meaningful. Because you are so clear, you can explain it so clearly. Otherwise, you'll parrot the scriptures. When people start, started asking the questions, you don't have any other option but to teach. Yes, but then you are helped. It has to happen naturally somehow. If you go naturally with the flow, and all these events will happen simultaneously that you will get the knowledge, then you will express it beautifully, then the students will approach you and the guru field will open their business with you. So all these, they come together. How would a seeker know that he is ready? No, they will never know. Just like I said, the clarity is one thing. But uh, they are happy with their clarity. Why will they take this trouble to teach anybody? So the guru comes to know who is ready to teach. If you don't have a guru, then you can rely on the guru field. Because they will arrange this thing. But I have seen that uh, if the student or the seeker tries to become the guru by hook or crook, very mysterious things happen. <laughs> Nothing works. Pratip is saying, since childhood I had this desire to help people and it got manifested. It's my own play. Yes, it looks like that is your prarabdh then. You have realized it. You made it real. So, very good. This life is fulfilled. If you complete your prerogation, that means your life is done. And that is why uh, I ask people to express. Even if they don't have the permission to teach, they can express. And we'll end today's satsang here. And I'll see you next time. Thank you everybody for uh, attending today's satsang.